Okay, this video is going to focus on uh, Kc, the equilibrium constant. Just before we do that, I just want to say one word about uh, equilibrium industry. Um, as with a lot of things in life, um, the actual conditions used in industry um, are a compromise as to um, maximizing, say, the pressure, the temperature, of a reaction. Um, for an industrial process it must be economically viable. So you've got to make the company money, in other words. So even though uh, in this harbour process you'd say, oh it's an exothermic reaction, uh, so you want a low temperature, and also you want um, a high pressure, then We've got a couple of issues here because using a high pressure is expensive and may pose a safety risk, you know, increased risk of uh, explosions. Uh, but if you use too low a temperature, then you affect the rate of reaction. So you end up with a slow rate of reaction. So you've got to use a compromise. Um, and so here in the hard process, we use. Uh, 300 degrees Celsius for 200 atmospheres and an iron catalyst. Again, the catalyst speeds up both the forward and the reverse reactions. Okay, but it allows the reaction to occur via an alternative pathway uh, which uses lower activation energy, so therefore we're going to have uh, lower costs, say, for electricity. Okay, KC. Kc is the equilibrium constant. Now we're going to see a lot of equilibria in the second year. So it's really important that you get to understand this now. Okay, the equilibrium constant is where we put a numerical value which compares the relative amounts of the reactants and products in a dynamic equilibrium. It is temperature dependent. It's very important, we'll come back to that later. Um, Kc is a measure of the position of the equilibrium. Okay, now Kc um, is given by this expression here. So we're saying Kc is proportional to the concentration of the products divided by the concentration of the reactants. Okay, uh, if you went on to do degree level chemistry, you'd see a, a refined version of this. Okay, so for a general reaction, so you've got uh, reactants A plus B in equilibrium C and D. The small letters refer to how many um, moles of each you require. So for example, A might be two moles of A, you have three moles of B, four one mole of C, and three moles of D. Okay. The equilibrium law, or the equilibrium constant, uh, both terms are used represent this is written by this is shown in this format where the products the concentrations of the products are divided by the concentrations of the reactants the concentrations of the same units moles per meter cubed um, and if you notice here we've got concentration of C to the power of C D concentration of E to the power of D Concentration of A to the power of A, concentration of B to the power of B. And so we use the, the number of moles of each chemical from the balanced equation in this expression here. Okay. The C in Kc refers to the term concentration. Um, and so here we've got our... Um, uh, expression for equilibrium constants. Capital K refers to constant. Okay, so an example would be this. If you had the Harvard process, one mole of nitrogen plus three moles of hydrogen in equilibrium with two moles of ammonia, the equilibrium uh, constants would be given by the concentration of ammonia squared, T comes from here, divided by 
the concentration of ammonia uh, of nitrogen to the power of one multiplied by the concentration of hydrogen to uh, the power of three. The units of Kc vary from reaction to reaction, and you've always got to calculate them for the reaction involved. Okay, so it really depends upon how many terms you have on the uh, on the top of your fraction and on the bottom of your, of your fraction. So in the case for the Harbour process, we've got our product is a is a concentration of ammonia squared. So the concentration units are moles per decimeter cubed. And because we've squared, we're going to square those terms. On the bottom, we've got concentration of nitrogen, units of moles per decimeter cubed, and we're going to multiply that by uh, the concentration of hydrogen cubed. So it's one, two, three. You cancel down uh, terms from the top and from the bottom, and this leaves you with 1 over mole, mole squared dm to the minus 6. So at A level we need to use um, uh, the indices properly. And so that is converted to mole to the minus 2 dm to the plus 6. Um, because when you take inverse a fraction then you change the powers of the indices. Okay. Uh, it says here when written positive indices are written first. Uh, we don't have to do that. Um, an AQA prefer you to write the, the moles term first. Okay. So um, let's have a look at uh, an example. So if we were to look at question D then what we would do is we would say Kc is equal to the concentration of the products so it's the concentration of N2O4 divided by the concentration of the reactants which is N O Two, and that is squared. Okay, so that will be our expression. Oops, two's missed. Just deleted itself. Um, and then the units would be given by mole dm to the minus three divided by mole squared dm to the minus 6, which um, when you cancel it down gives you mol to the minus 1 dm to the, to the plus 3. You don't have to put your positive sign in for your dm. Okay, so that's how you would do that one. Okay, now, the significance of the value of Kc. If Kc is greater than uh, the number 1, then that means that there are more products than reactants. Okay, and it just figures because it's the um, a fraction. Because Kc is given by a fraction, if, you, if your top value is greater than your bottom value, then it's going to be 1 or greater. It's going to be greater than 1. Okay, so it rests, equilibrium rests, rests on the right hand side. If Kc is less than 1, that means you've still got more reactants than products. Okay, so again, so imagine if you've got um, concentration of 2 mole per decimeter cube for your reactants, 1 mole per decimeter cube for your products, well that means your Kc expression would be a half. Okay, now, which factors affect and do not affect the value of Kc for an equilibrium? Um, it's quite quite straightforward, actually. Only temperature affects 
the value of Kc. Okay, so even though we talked about Lushitai's principle, I will discuss it again later. Okay, only K, uh, only changes in temperature will affect the value of Kc. And so this means that when Kc is being quoted, it's quoted for a particular temperature. Uh, if you change the temperature of that reaction of that equilibrium, a new equilibrium position is established and that will result in a new value for Kc. So the examiners love to ask a question about how would uh, Kc change if you increase the pressure or increase the concentration in an equilibrium. Okay. But the answer is Kc does not change. Okay. You might be you will be able to increase the equilibrium yield of a reactor, of a product or a reactant, but the value of Kc itself does not change. It remains a constant. Okay. So again, it's the Kc is unaffected by any changes in concentration or pressure. Okay, so um, so yeah, so an example here would be uh, write an expression for the equilibrium constant Kc for this reaction deduce its units. So it would be uh, Kc would be equal to the concentration of your products divided by the concentration of your reactants so that's SO2 squared multiplied by the concentration of oxygen okay and then the units would be because uh, sorry and because the two squared terms cancel down then your units would be mole to the minus one dm to the power three. Okay. Now it says here in an experiment, um, reaction is repeated. Same amount of sulfur dioxide, oxygen, sulfur trioxide. Uh, but in a smaller flask, the mixture was allowed to reach the equilibrium. State the effect, if any, on using a small flask on the value of Kc. no effect because only temperature changes the value of Kc okay. um, and then it says part 2 state the effect if, effect if any on using small flask on the amount of sulfur trioxide in equilibrium ok so now we can invoke um, Lushitai's principle and we can say We've got three ga gaseous moles on the left hand side, two gaseous moles on the right hand side. Okay. The equilibrium will shift to the side with the few mo fewest moles of gas. So that will be uh, the right hand side. So the effect will be to increase the amount of sulfur trioxide and the explanation is because there are fewer moles of gas on the uh, on the right hand side. The equilibrium shifts to to minimise the change uh, applied. Okay. Uh, okay. I'm going to leave it for at that position for the moment. Uh, we'll do one more video just on how to calculate Kc. Thank you for watching.